Good morning, everybody. The Lord impressed a verse on me early on in the pandemic, uh, and I shared it with about as many people as that would listen uh, uh, through the months. Now I want to I want to go back to it today. I don't I don't know if it's for one person that's here today, or or uh, maybe be for uh, many of you. I don't, I don't know. I, all I know is the urging of the Holy Spirit. And I do know that. I do know what it feels like to be urged and pressed by the Holy Spirit in a particular direction. And I feel this real strongly, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to uh, give it to you. Uh, it's Isaiah. It's tucked away in Isaiah. It's chapter 41. It's verse 10. It's a verse maybe you've committed to memory. If you've not committed it to memory, it may serve you well for the rest of your life if you choose to memorize the, the words of the verse. It starts out, fear thou not, Isaiah 41.10, fear thou not. It's been a time of fear for a lot of people. Some have really chosen to deny the fear, but I tell you, a lot of people's hearts have been gripped by fear. Whether, whether they've admitted it or not. But God's, God's Word tells us, fear thou not. And here's the reason why. He said, for I am with you. I am with thee. And be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What an amazing verse. I, I looked at it as a pandemic verse. I really did. And I look, look at it as a verse for times of adversity. And someone mentioned the other night that they saw something else on the horizon in our service. Uh, and I don't know what that might be, but I don't know what adversity we may encounter. But I know this verse is in the Word of God. And I'm going to hold on to it. I believe that we ought to allow the verse to speak into our lives. I often uh, have thanked God for the opportunity to speak into people's lives. But what I'm really grateful for is that I can speak the Word of God into your lives. You see, my opinion doesn't mount for much. Christy can tell you. She doesn't care much for my opinion. But, but I'll tell you what does matter. It matters what God says. And this is what God says to his people. You say, well, that's Old Testament. Uh, I, I believe that Jesus brings it right up to date and makes it very relevant uh, for, for, for us in this hour. I believe these words ring true. It's a verse for a time of adversity. And you may have situations and circumstances that are adverse, contrary. The winds might not be at your back. They may be contending uh, for, for your breath, actually. If you need something, and I think we all do, to add tremendous security and assurance to your life, uh, you need to take a moment and look at this verse. Uh, you need to apply the eternal truths found here, I believe, for the people of God. Because I believe this truth is timeless. It's a timeless truth. And I believe it's a promise that lasts forever. Uh, one thing we need to remember as believers is that God's Word generates faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And God's Word, when it's heard, sparks faith in our hearts. Who wants to be a person of faith instead of a person of fear? Well, we have to pay attention to the Word of God. The promises of God, the strong promises of God will silence our fears. Sometimes the voice of fear gets pretty loud, but God has a way of quieting it. Peace be still in our life. I'm not going to lie to you, life offers a lot of challenging things. There are frightening moments for all of us and intimidating moments and situations. And there are alarming events that take place. If you live long enough, it happens. And there will be times when you seem inadequate. Uh, that's just the way it is. Our weakness can be on full display. Uh, what in the world am I going to do? 
Our resources are insufficient, so we struggle for strategy. Answers, we like answers, but we can't get our hands on them. Solutions, understanding. Listen, there may be somebody under the sound of my voice today that's in a dark place. And you're wondering if you'll ever see the light of day again. What's happening? The, the, the experience, uh, I guess experiencing the weight of it all is just too heavy. The thing is, there are predators in the earth. And, you know, Jesus said, or, or uh, Jesus talked about the, the, the devil, the thief cometh not. John, what is it, 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and what? Kill and destroy. And then Peter mentions, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour, right? There are predators in the earth. Predators abound. We need a protector. And we have a protector in our God. And this verse, I think, makes us aware of His protection over our life. There's seven parts to the verse. I'm not preaching a long time. i got another party to go to. My, my granddaughter graduated. Last week was my dad's 89th birthday that we were going to celebrate. And we had a great time, and it was great to be with my brother and his family and, and little Harper May. I held her as much as I could, 14 months old, and what a blessing. Saw her for the first time last week, and uh, thinking about going to Tennessee to see her again. Uh, so Carly's uh, graduation party's here after a while, and we got a couple of other stops, I guess, to make, but I'm not preaching a long time, so you can kind of ease up if, you're, if your stomach's been kind of clenched in a knot wondering whether I'm going to preach forever. No, I'm not. You can relax. There's seven parts. You've heard that before and, didn't, and it turned, didn't turn out so well, huh? Uh, seven parts to this verse, and it's easy to break it down. There are two commands in the verse. Say two commands. Amen. Two commands and five promises. Say five promises. Amen. Two commands and five promises in one verse. Isaiah 41.10 has two. Two commands and five promises. And the uh, promises are just glorious. The commands, one and two, fear thou not. That's how the verse opens. And it is a command. It's not a suggestion. God's commanding His people, fear thou not. And then the second command is be not dismayed. So anytime you're in fear and anytime you're dismayed, guess what? You're being disobedient to the clear instruction of the Word of God. How many of you want to be compliant to the Word of God? You want to be obedient to God's Word? He says, fear thou not, and neither be thou dismayed. And the promises are, there, there's, there's two of them that are I am's in the King James, and Three of them that are I wills in the King James. And they're all just positive statements. And he says, first of all, I am with thee. How many of you are glad for that? He's with us. And he said, I am thy God. We have a relationship. with. He's our Father. I am thy God. We have relationship because of Jesus Christ. He reconciles us to God through the cross. And now we're made peace with God and He's our Father. We're in the family. Now these, these next ones are really good for me. He said, I will strengthen thee. And He said, I will help thee. And the fifth one is, yea, I will uphold thee with my righteous right hand or my right hand of righteousness. I will uphold thee. I don't know if you ever needed to be held up or not. My dad, he's a little shaky these days. Sometimes he'll tell me, you better get a hold of me, or sometimes I have to get a hold of him to get him up, you know, help him, help him along. He told me yesterday he's really unsteady and got kind of dizzy and didn't know if he was going to fall or needs to be held, need to be held on to. I'm glad to have a God that holds on to me. How about you? 
sometimes we think that uh, it's all left up to us in our relationship with God that we hold on to Him. But I want to tell you, I have a God that holds on to me. Uh, I've told you this story a lot of times. I don't know why I'm bringing it up. Uh, but uh, one time we were in a particular store. It was a, it was a, uh, uh, oh, a little shop in Bloomington. I'll leave it at that. And there was a lady, very nice lady. She had a bag. And uh, she got in that bag and she pulled out some rocks. And my kids were with me and she gave my two younger kids each a rock. And I'm watching from a little distance away and she's a very nice lady. I mean, she's sweet. And she gave the rocks and the kids are looking at them and she said, they are gods. They're Aztec gods. And you can have it. And I'm, well, I've just got real difficulty with restraint. But I've already been warned by my oldest son not to be making a scene. It was his deal. He went in this shop with a purpose to buy. And he said, Dad, just let me go in and get what I need and we'll get out. But now a lady is giving my kids false gods. And I watched them. And they looked at them and they put them back in the bag. Boy, was I ever impressed with my little kids. That's been years ago, but that's what you got. I don't want a God that I've got to hold on to and carry around with me and prop up. I'm glad that God props me up and holds on to me. How about you? So here are the promises. I am with thee. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hey, if you're afraid today, you might as well own up to it. There's no use in denying it. But God has a remedy for your fear. God has a word that He would bring into your life. That's how you overcome fear is with the Word of God. Faith is what dismisses fear. And faith comes from the clear word, the clear teaching and understanding of the Word of God. Fear thou not. Let me tell you, and you know it to be true, God is greater than whatever you fear. God is greater still. Whatever your darkness, God is greater still. And if you feel all alone, and there are people that are, they're feeling very lonely. He speaks into your life. And He says, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. Someone says, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And God says, I'm with you. If you're dismayed or discouraged, He said, I am your God. I am thy God. And if you're weak, like me, He says, I will strengthen thee. And if you lack support, He says, I, I will help you. You ever had trouble be fr become frustrated if you couldn't find the help you need to get a project done? God said, I'll help you. How many of you are up for God's help in your life? He said, I'll help you. If you're reeling and unsteady and, feel, and, and fearful of falling, God said, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So our, out of this verse, I believe that we can develop and should develop bold confessions or affirmations derived from... Nothing but the Word of God, just the Word of God, we can derive bold confessions or affirmations of our faith and that we should speak, I think, into our own life, into our own hearing. We can speak the Word of God into our own hearing out of this single verse. And, it, and, and the confessions, per, I believe, have, are, are weighty. That means they're, 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 they're strong and powerful. They, they make a difference. They're transformative. Your life won't be the same if you just anchor into this verse and get a hold of the truths. Uh, God is with me. Say it. God is with me. God is my God. Right? Say it. God is with me. God is my God. God will strengthen me. God will help me. God will hold me. I will not fear. I will not be dismayed. Thank you. Thank you for joining with me there. For all who might be given to panic or worry, 
for all who may be frightened or rattled or unnerved. If you're alarmed, you've got to take hold of God's Word. If you're in a difficult place, I give you one verse today. I, give you, I, I got more verses to give you, but I, I give you one verse today. It's, it's Isaiah 41.10. So I know now from this verse, whatever my situation, it's not bigger than my God. It's not. No matter what, God is bigger still. God is always greater than whatever my circumstances. You got to look to the greatness of God. And you got to listen for His voice. I could caution you a little bit. Be careful about uh, who you listen to and what you listen to. Make sure you're tuning in, focusing on the voice of God. You need to, I, I guess, we, we use, take a term from the athletic, the coaching world. You need to lock in to hearing the voice of God. Coaches want their players to lock in in the situations, game, game situations. You've got to be locked in and focused. I believe it's time for the church to get locked in to hearing the voice of Almighty God. The power of God's Word is life-changing. God's Word does silence fear. And I pray that you will experience more and more of God's greatness and power in your own life. The sevenfold confession, the sevenfold affirmation, again, is God is with me. Whisper it back to me. God is with me. God is my God. He will strengthen me. He will help me. He will hold me up. He, let's go a little step. He will hold me together. Isn't that great? He will uphold me. He's going to hold you up, hold you together. He's going to hold you. Tammy sang a beautiful song there about, boy, that's good getting that close to Jesus, isn't it? To listen and even hear his heartbeat. I will not fear. It's hard to fear when you're that close to Jesus. I will not fear. I will not be dismayed. It's a sevenfold confession of our faith and affirmation simply taken from Isaiah 41.10. Let's do it one more time. If anybody's writing them down, you've had time to copy them all down. God is with me. God is my God. He will strengthen me. He will help me. He will hold me up and hold me together. I will not fear. And I will not be dismayed. If you're like me, you need strength for your weakness. I need strength for my weakness. I need help. You can look at me and say, well, I've heard people say it. I've heard people, well, they think I can't hear, but I hear it. That Jeff, he needs a lot of help. You know, <laughs> that Jeff, boy, he needs a lot of help. Somebody watched one of my videos. Boy, that preacher, he needs a lot of help. <laughs> and I need to be steadied. We need to be steadied. And there's nothing better than having Jesus steady your life. I tell you, He can keep you on your feet. Keep you moving forward. I'm glad for the promises of God's Word. Let's stand together and pray. Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. Your Word has not only changed our life, Your Word is changing our life. And we are glad, Lord, for the power that's in Your Word. And to have this promise from Isaiah 41.10 is just amazing. We take it as a verse for times of adversity. In the difficult moments, we'll anchor and hold to this verse. Thank You, Lord. Thank You for Your commands. And thank You for Your promises. And we as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your precious word. We're grateful that we can stand on your promises, both now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said amen.